Fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah Thus says the Lord, Share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. The fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from Isaiah 58, 7-10. This passage is taken from the part of the book of the prophet Isaiah that's called Trito Isaiah, which was written after the return from the Babylonian exile, after 539 B.C., The people had heard many promises in 2nd Isaiah, chapters 40 to 55, in which God himself promised that he would restore the people, that he would lead them back in a return to Israel which was greater than the first return, the Exodus. Well, the people returned to Israel, but things were not going well. There was famine, there was drought, there were attacks by nomads, etc. And so the people felt as if God had not fulfilled his promises. Trito Isaiah reminds the people that it's their own fault, that they haven't been living the faith. So why should they expect the blessing of God when they're not willing to live in that blessing? And how could they live in the blessing? Sharing bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked, the corporal works of mercy, that the people are called to respond to God's call by living a life of charity. Because charity is the public manifestation of what's in their hearts. It's not enough simply to believe and then be a miserable person. We have to believe and live what we believe. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians 2, 1-5. Paul says that he came in weakness and fear and trembling. Before he came to Corinth, he had preached in Athens and it had not gone well. He spoke in the Areopagus And he had been rejected because of what he said, especially preaching about the resurrection of the dead. So when he came to Corinth, he preached the wisdom of God, which is the wisdom of the cross, a wisdom that doesn't make sense to Jews or to Greeks, but it's a true wisdom, the power of God, manifested in the weakness of Christ dying on the cross. And so likewise, we will be most powerful when we surrender, when we place ourselves fully in God's hands, in God's design. The Gospel comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. This is two wisdom sayings. 
You're the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing than to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. That in fact, if salt became insipid, it would be thrown onto the pathway to sort of keep the dust down a bit. It was useless for preserving food, for flavoring food. We have to be a bit of the zest of this world. We have to be willing to give witness to our faith. And likewise, we have to be a light that's set upon a lampstand so everyone can see what we're doing. We have to be transparent. We have to give public witness to who we are. Now remember, these sayings are contradicted by the idea contained in Matthew 7, which says that when you do charity, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. Do it in private. And a lot of it depends upon our motivation. If we're doing it to be seen by others and to be praised by others, it's better to do it in private. If we're doing it to give witness, even if that witness will get us in trouble, we'll have to pay a price for giving witness to our faith, then we should do it in public. And may God bless us.